Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 8, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Dick Cheney speaks of a possible Iran attack on the U.S. Then, Putin admits to supporting the Syrian military. After that, the Air Force is trying to force property owners to leave Area 51. And the White House considers migrant resettlement. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And it's going to be hillbilly, true redneck culture for blacks, Hispanics, whites, I don't care. You go to Mexico, the folks that are independent down there are more redneck than any redneck I ever saw in Texas. They don't want wild men. They don't want hill people. They don't want folks like that with solar power, with technology, that know how to run machine shops, and know how to reload ammo, and know how to skin a buck, run a trot line, and who run their own governments, and who have farmers markets. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. As hundreds of thousands of refugees are flooding into Europe, we're already seeing massive anti-immigration protests. Now, this, this latest demonstration in Germany saw thousands of protesters expressing anger over the fact that there is this influx of refugees. Now, one protester told uh, RT, you know, we don't see the refugees as bad. We blame politicians for flooding Germany with large number of mainly young Muslim males. The government is taking irresponsible risks since no one can predict how they will behave in the future. And another activist said, they allow people without papers, without anything, by the thousands to come into this country. They could be murderers, could be criminals, and it should be forbidden. So obviously a lot of people are really upset with the response being to this influx of refugees. Uh, just basically the, the gates are wide open. Now, refugees seeking asylum in Germany have to pass through Hungary, and this has caused a very tense situation in the region. Hungary has, of course, been lambasted by other European politicians for refusing to accept their fair share of migrants. Now, Hungary's prime minister has repeatedly insisted that his country has a right to protect its Christ Christian traditions by not allowing Muslims to settle in the country. Now, we've already seen what has happened when large numbers of people settle in a country and refuse to assimilate. Uh, we've seen French girls being beaten up for wearing bikinis. As well, we've seen Subway in certain parts uh, where they have a large Muslim community. Now we're not even selling pork and things like that in their food and their sandwiches. So it, it definitely has an effect on the culture there. And the prime minister of Hungary is saying, you know, what about these other nations, you know, that, that also have a Christian foundation? Now there's a new video showing how some of these, these uh, refugees are treating people there in Hungary. Uh, it's a video showing marauding migrants running down the platform of a railway track in Hungary. They're throwing rocks and shouting expletives. And this video is just one of a number of videos seeming to prove what these protesters in Berlin are saying, that it's mostly men who are coming, contrary to what the media is, is portraying as families and children um, fleeing a crisis. There are very few families or children in a lot of these clips. In another video, uh, you're gonna see Muslim refugees in Budapest chanting Allah Akbar and F you. Another bystander is saying that they attacked an old lady and that they're throwing feces at bystanders. Um, and then we have another clip of Muslims on a train in France 
Um, it shows a man screaming out slogans before all the passengers chant Allah Akbar in unison. So that does not look to be desperate families fleeing war-torn Syria. It looks like an invasion, quite frightening. And it makes, you know, more terrifying sense when you flash back to this report from February 2015. ISIS threatens to send 500,000 migrants to Europe as a psychological weapon in chilling echo of Gaddafi's prophecy that the Mediterranean will become a sea of chaos. These are uh, transcripts taken of telephone intercepts published in Italy. They claim to provide evidence that ISIS was threatening to send 500,000 migrants simultaneously out to sea in hundreds of boats and a psychological weapon against Europe if there would be military intervention against them in Libya. And they also recorded uh, separately that the militants hoped to cement their control of Libya, then cross the Mediterranean disguised as refugees. And as predicted back in 2011, if the Gaddafis were brought down, Islamists would exploit the power vacuum. And so if you were like me this morning, I woke up and I was like, where did this come from, this influx of, of migrants and refugees? It seems like just last week, all of a sudden, there are millions of people flooding the country. And when you look at a story like this, it seems to make perfect sense. The orders were given, the people saw it was time to go, and now we're seeing the repercussions of that. But this is exactly why uh, Saudi Arabia and other, uh, other of those states claim that they're not taking any refugees because they don't want to also accidentally let in some terrorists by, you know, who are disguising themselves as refugees. Meanwhile, the White House, of course, is considering refugee resettlement, uh, much like the gates have been wide open now for people from Central America fleeing gang violence. The White House is basically saying, you know what, come on in. The borders can be open to some potential terrorists as well, possibly disguised as refugees. Now, obviously, these are not all bad people, but even a, a, a true Syrian refugee told the New York Times, uh, he said the Pakistanis and others were discarding their IDs in an effort to fake Syrian citizenship and get preferential treatment. Um, this was 28 year old um, who said, I am Syrian, you know, a real Syrian. Here we have Pakistanis, Afghans, Iraqis, and they all throw away their papers and claim to be Syrian. Everyone is a Syrian now. It is a big problem. And that was exactly something that we reported uh, happening at the border. A lot of Border Patrol agents were saying that no one was coming in with any identification. All they were saying was permiso and that they were fleeing gang violence in El Salvador and, and all of that, but without any real proof. So who knows who's coming in? And it's funny because the president never even really spoke out about that border crisis either. He was too busy playing golf. Now he's been really busy taking selfies and eating salmon with Bear grills in Alaska. So, but this is just the beginning of what is to come if Europe does not pull up the drawbridge. Now this comes from Patrick J. Buchanan. He writes, for the scores of thousands of Syrians in the Balkans, Hungary, Austria, and Germany are only the first wave. Behind them in Lebanon, Turkey, and Jordan are four million refugees from the Syrian civil war. Seeing the success of the first wave, they are now on the move. Behind them are two million Alawites and two million Christians who will be fleeing Syria when the Bashar Assad regime falls to ISIS and the Al Qaeda terrorists who already occupy half of that blood soaked land. He goes on to describe Iraq, Africa, Europe. Europe is going to run out of altruism before it runs out of refugees. And, you know, as the New York Times reported Monday, there is no end in sight to the coming third world and Islamic migrations to Europe. No end in sight. So we're really only seeing the first wave there. And uh, basically, liberalism is the ideology of Western suicide. That's how he concludes. Now, Paul Joseph Watson reports that many of these so-called refugees are actually economic migrants who are fleeing their conditions uh, in search for a higher standard of living. They're not from fleeing from ISIS or other persecution. Uh, and he says that this migrant crisis is about pushing uh, multiculturalism in the West. European citizens have spent the last two years voting to reject the failed policies of multiculturalism and mass immigration. So isn't it an amazing coincidence how left-wing parties in Europe who will benefit from votes 
from future naturalised migrants and their children have been so welcoming of them. Being completely dependent on government, those naturalised citizens will then vote for even bigger government. Big corporations also love mass immigration. It means a fresh supply of cheap labour that will drive down everyone else's wages. So who else benefits? Economic migrants who are abusing the crisis by claiming to be Syrian refugees when they're clearly not. As the Sydney Morning Herald reports, 90% of those arriving in Serbia from Macedonia say they're Syrian, but have no documents to prove it. 90%. They're finding discarded ID cards belonging to Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. These people aren't fleeing war. They're not running from ISIS. They're trampling on the backs of legitimate Syrian refugees in an effort to try and suck off Europe's giant welfare state. And then you have the Syrians themselves. Isn't it an amazing coincidence how many of these war refugees have no interest whatsoever in remaining in peaceful European countries that refuse to shower them with cash. And many of the refugees don't even look like refugees at all. They're mainly working age men, well fed, not emaciated, not hungry. They're not wearing rags. Many of them are even carrying the latest iPhone. And I don't begrudge people seeking a better lifestyle, but can we please stop pretending that all these individuals are fleeing from war. What makes someone a refugee is that they're fleeing from danger, not fleeing to a higher standard of living. What on earth has Pakistanis flooding into Sweden to get on benefits got to do with actual Syrians escaping ISIS persecution? And how is that in any way comparable to Jews fleeing Nazi Germany as some sectors of the media have framed it. But isn't it commendable that rich Gulf Arab states located right next to Syria are really pulling their weight in helping Europe deal with the burden? Here's a list of how many refugees Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates and Oman have taken in. Nada, zilch, zero, sweet, F-A while Germany alone takes in 800,000. Months ago, ISIS promised to exploit the migrant crisis to infiltrate thousands of terrorists into Europe. But don't worry, they'll be well looked after if Sweden enacts what some of its political class are calling for, jobs, welfare and housing for Islamic State jihadists all at taxpayer expense. So while European citizens are being frisked at airports every single day, potential terrorists are being invited straight in with no security checks, no ID checks, nothing. And in the name of diversity, we're welcoming into Europe huge numbers of people who are completely intolerant of diversity. Case in point, a head teacher at a school in Germany situated near a migrant camp is telling teen girls not to wear mini skirts because it might offend the migrants and provoke attacks. Many of these people are illiterate. They have no concept whatsoever of Western liberal democracy. They have no concept of freedom. They have no concept of treating women as first class citizens. And there's no plan in place by European governments to integrate them into this way of life. As Peter Hitchens writes, mass immigration means we adapt to them when they should be adapting to us. And what was the cause of this crisis in the first place? And I've said this so many times that it seems almost cliched at this point, but the media still never mentions it. They act as if this crisis just emerged out of nowhere. It began after NATO governments armed and funded jihadist rebels in Libya and Syria, many of whom went on to join ISIS. If you keep destabilizing secular governments in the Middle East and trying to replace them with jihadists, the wave of legitimate migrants trying to escape that turmoil will never end. As Ron Paul writes, here is the real solution to the refugee problem. Stop meddling in the affairs of other countries. Embrace the prosperity that comes with a peaceful foreign policy, not the poverty.